Sure, it's no Black Panther or Avengers Infinity War, but we'll gladly take it over that Topher Grace movie. Oh yeah, I know all about you. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 5 things Venom did right. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're taking a look at the first entry in Sony's Marvel Universe, which was mostly panned by critics and generally well-liked by mainstream audiences. Although it's hard to say how its consensus may evolve over time, we're focusing on the film's strengths here. Number 5. The Slick Character Design and CGI Many comic readers were worried based on the film's first teaser trailer, which revealed the alien symbiote, but glanced over the titular anti-hero. You used to be one thing. Now, you're something else. Fortunately, Venom got plenty of face time in the finished film, with a design that was cool, creepy, and faithful to his counterpart on the printed page. What the hell are you? We are Venom. Venom's shape-shifting powers, in particular, make leeway for a lot of creative imagery. This not only applies to the action sequences, like that inventive car chase, but also the more character-driven moments, such as Venom's introduction to Eddie. Venom coils around Eddie like a snake and practically slithers into his head, amounting to a visual that would feel right at home in a comic book. Look my eyes, Eddie. Number 4. Michelle Williams as Anne Weying You gonna behave yourself tomorrow? I told you, I'm gonna do my job. Sony's portrayals of female Marvel characters have been hit and miss. Mary Jane Watson frequently acted as the damsel in distress while Gwen Stacy was more active. Anne Weying was given a lot more to do, as she actually helps Eddie and emerges as a strong heroine. Even when the dialogue gets a little hokey, Michelle Williams delivers every line with conviction, which is exactly why she's one of the finest actresses working today. We also get to see her become She-Venom, resulting in what might be the best superhero kiss since the original Spider-Man. Granted, we wish there was more of She-Venom in the movie, but we'd definitely be down for a Bride of Venom spin-off. No idea how much you're scaring me right now. Number 3. The Dynamic Between Eddie and Venom if you're gonna stay, you will only hurt bad people. The way I see it, we can do whatever we want. Do we have a deal? While Eddie's relationship with Anne is well handled, he arguably has more chemistry with Venom. Their dynamic plays out less like a Jekyll and Hyde scenario and more like something out of a screwball buddy comedy. As a matter of fact, Tom Hardy compared their duality to Ren and Stimpy. Oh, listen to me, man. I'm your friend. Don't you know cartoons will ruin your mind? In creating Venom's voice, Hardy envisioned Venom as a James Brown lounge lizard, acting opposite Eddie's everyday kind of guy persona. The result might not be the most complex depiction of either character, but the movie's personality largely stems from their humorous banter with Eddie trying to teach Venom how to control himself, and Venom trying to teach Eddie how to take control of his life. Eddie, cooperate. And you just might survive. Number 2. It's stuck to the source material. History starts today. Since Spider-Man doesn't play a role in this film, Sony naturally had to take a few liberties. Even with these restrictions, however, producer Matt Tolmach knew that the movie had to, quote, stay close to the Bible, end quote. The filmmakers more or less remain true to our main character's origin story, as Eddie Brock doesn't start off as the nicest guy, allowing Venom to tap into his dark side. The film also borrows from various other comic story arcs, particularly the Lethal Protector arc, which sees Venom taking on Carlton Drake and the Life Foundation. While the character development can feel rushed and the motivations don't always add up, the filmmakers ultimately exemplified a better understanding of the source material than some other incarnations. Eddie, the suit! You gotta take it off! Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Number 1. It let Tom Hardy go nuts. You do not want to do this, trust me. Mask! Copy! All right, have it your own way. Mask! Copy! Even if you went into the movie with doubts, one thing everybody seemed to agree on was that Tom Hardy had the charisma, physique, and boldness required to pull this role off. Hardy's performance not only brought a fair deal of humor to the equation, but also incorporated a wildcard factor. While the interactions between Eddie and Venom are fun, the highlight of the film is simply watching Hardy go off his rocker as he eats stale chicken and goes swimming in a lobster tank. Actually, Hardy improvised the scene with live lobsters. Whether you find these moments legitimately hilarious or just plain awkward, Hardy is always a blast to watch when unleashed. Oh, I have a parasite. Yeah. Name is Chen.
Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.